Today's video is the second in a three part mini series called HS2 What Where Why and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the route of HS2 Phase 1 which is currently under construction. Another video will be released immediately after this one that will look at where HS2 trains will serve. I won't go into too much detail about the route as there is an interactive map on the HS2 Limited website that gives you a good overview and is relatively precise and I'll leave a link in the description below to that map. Instead, I'll be covering some of the key elements of the Phase 1 route, which is approximately 140 miles in length. The video will be timestamped, and if I've made a video about a particular section, I'll leave a link to that video next to the timestamp, so you can check out a particular section of interest in a little bit more detail. So, let's dive in. Starting in the south at London Euston, where a new 10 platform terminus station is being constructed, and is located just to the west of the existing West Coast Mainline station. Then, heading northwest, the line will head almost immediately into a set of twin board tunnels known as Euston Tunnels. From there, they will head west for approximately 5 miles before reaching the first new station on the route. This new station, known as Old Oak Common, is a new super hub that will provide passengers with links to the Elizabeth Line and Great Western Main Line. The six platforms at Old Oak Common will be constructed in a box approximately 20 metres below the surface, whilst the new station with eight platforms will be constructed on the Great Western Main Line. From Old Oak Common heading west, there will be a short section of tunnel before reaching the Victoria crossover box that will allow southbound trains to switch tracks before approaching Old Oak Common station. From the crossover box, trains will continue in a set of twin board tunnels known as North Alt Tunnels for a further 8 miles, finally reaching the surface at West Ryslip. From there, the trains will ascend onto the Con Valley Viaduct that will take trains for 2 miles over the Con Valley itself. After the viaduct, the route descends once again into another set of twin board tunnels that will take the line underneath the M25 and for a further 10 miles underneath the Chilterns. After the Chiltern tunnels, the next tunnel reached will be Wendover Tunnel that will be the first of five so-called green tunnels. The green tunnels will not be constructed using TBMs or tunnel boring machines, but will instead be built using the cut and cover method, which is better suited to relatively short, shallow tunnels. The cut and cover method of construction involves excavating a cutting in which precast concrete tunnel sections are placed, then once the tunnel is complete, the cutting is backfilled with the previously excavated material. Wendover Tunnel, that will be constructed just to the west of the A413, will be just under one mile in length. Just outside the village of Steeple Claydon, which is approximately 20 miles north of the Wendover Tunnel, is the location where HS2 will cross East West Rail, with the bridge that will carry EWR over HS2 recently moved into place. Adjacent to this, there will be an infrastructure maintenance depot that will be constructed for HS2, and there will also be passive provision over part of what was the old Great Central Railway for a link that could provide a connection from Aylesbury to EWR. Moving further north to Northamptonshire, the route encounters another two green tunnels, the first of which at Great Worth will be 1.6 miles long, and the second at Chipping Warden that will be 1.5 miles long. The next set of twin bore tunnels on the route will take trains underneath Long Itchington Wood in Warwickshire. Despite the tunnels only being one mile in length, they are being constructed using TVMs, and this is in order to preserve as much of the woodland as possible. One of the tunnel bores has in fact already been constructed by TBM Dorothy, which has moved back to the tunnel launching site and is now being used to construct the second tunnel bore, which is expected to be complete next summer. Heading north towards Birmingham, there will be one final green tunnel located at Burton Green to the southwest of Coventry, with this tunnel being just half a mile in length. From there we reach the next new station on the line, located in a triangular section of land between the M42, A45 and A452. This new station, called Interchange, will have four platforms and will be connected to the existing Birmingham International Railway Station and Birmingham Airport by means of a rapid people mover system. From there, the line heads to the east of Birmingham until it reaches the M42. Here things start to get a little bit complicated, as not only does the line have to cross the M42, A45 and M6, but this is where the line diverges with a grade separated or flying junction taking trains east to Birmingham city centre, whilst the core main line heads north. There will also be another grade separated junction that will allow trains travelling from the north to head into Birmingham Curzon Street. Delta Junction, as it's known, gets its name from the triangular or delta shape the three separate sets of flying junctions and associated viaducts will form. The spur that heads west towards Birmingham after crossing the link between the M6 and M42 will head into a 3.5 mile long tunnel that will emerge just after Bromford Lane located to the south of where the M6 crosses the A47. Almost immediately after the tunnel, there will be a large train maintenance depot at Washwood Heath that will be used to maintain the new fleet of high speed trains. 
From Washwood Heath, the route continues west on a series of bridges and viaducts before approaching the new station being constructed in the city centre on the site of the old Curzon Street station, with the main entrance of which being constructed adjacent to Birmingham Moor Street station. Heading back to the core main line, this continues north and once again crosses the M42. Just before the M42 crossing however, passive provision for a further grade separated junction will be constructed. This junction could one day take trains towards the East Midlands, however this spur is currently under review. Phase 1 of the route ends just to the north of Litchfield, where the line diverges once more, with the core main line heading north to connect with what will be Phase 2A whilst the spur will head west to connect with the West Coast Main Line between Litchfield and Rugeley. Although Phase 1 ends just before Litchfield, the route will in fact continue north towards Crewe as part of Phase 2A. Preliminary works due to commence on that section next year. I'll be taking a closer look at Phase 2A and Phase 2B in a future video. So there we are, that's just a brief overview of some of the key elements of the route. As mentioned at the start of the video, there is an interactive map which allows you to explore the route in more detail with a link to that map in the description below. If you've got any questions about the route, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video informative, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really does help to get my videos noticed and the channel as well. But I'm going to leave it there for today. See you until next time. Bye bye.